On this, the May 1st, 2023 edition of What's Going On With Shipping, the tanker Pablo explodes off the coast of Malaysia. Hi, I'm your host, Sal Mercogliano. Welcome to today's episode. So I was in the process of filming my weekly What the Ship, trying to get that out, and a story comes across that really needs a lot of attention. And I know I seem to be the Jim Cantori right now of Maritime Disaster News, really not trying to be, but this one is of particular importance because it involves a tanker off the coast of Malaysia that just came out of China and hit the anchorage off of the coast. And this is an area where there have been ship-to-ship -ship transfers of oil. And in particular, one of the things we're seeing is non-sanctioned oil going to places. I've talked about for a long time that there was a disaster waiting to happen, and here's the first indicator of this. Everyone who has watched this happen had been warning about this, that the potential for disaster was there because these operations were taking place without a lot of oversight and control. And what we see now is that happening. So we're going to jump into this story, break it down, take a look at it. This is developing news. So I'm probably not going to get everything right or correct the first time because, again, this is just breaking as it comes out. If you're new to the channel, hey, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. All right, let's take a look at this. This is the story, a G Captain, a Reuters story with some images, and I'll show you some images and some videos here in a minute. Three crew members of a Gabon registered tanker were missing after the vessel caught fire on Monday in waters off Malaysia's southern coast. Uh, this is according to the Malaysian Maritime Authority. The tanker was on its way from China to Singapore. It was not on its way to Singapore. We're going to talk about that in a minute. 28 crew members on board. 23 were rescued by nearby vessels. The um, Malaysian Maritime Enforcement Agency said it commenced search and rescue operations after it received an alert at 1600 local time about a tanker on fire. The cause of the incident is under investigation. They identified the ship as the Pablo. Pablo Union Shipping, the Marshall Islands-based owner of the vessel, according to shipping databases, could not be located for comment. Notice it's not reached, but located for comment. The vessel insurers are unknown. All right, let's go ahead and break this down a little bit. So here, here are some images we have of the fire. And if you look at that image prior to that, the fire was across the tanks. Uh, it was not a engine room fire. It was not in the after house. Uh, it was located throughout the tanks of the vessel. And here, this picture is a little bit uh, uh, deceptive because you're seeing a tanker in front and then the, the Pablo behind. Let's go ahead and take a look at several videos that were filmed of this. So here's a video that was filmed. You can see the ship. Number one, the ship is light. You can tell the ship is light because of how high it is out of the water right here. You can see the boot topping right here. You can see the bulbous bow right there. You can see part of the rudder showing at the stern. Notice she is smoking from all her tanks. I'm going to come back to that in a second. So this is a view from the port side of the vessel, a little bit better. You can see how light the vessel is. You can see the smoke originating from the holds of the vessel, the tanks of the vessel. So what I think has happened here is you've had a basically a gas explosion on board. Uh, basically what you had is a procedure that usually is done on board ships is to inert their tanks. So since 1974, under SOLAS, the safety of life at sea, ships are required to have, tankers are required to have an inert gas system. Prior to 1974, Tanker explosions were very common because one of the things that would happen is you would build up explosive gases within tanks when you're loading or unloading. And then you would have a electric charge being done where static electricity would cause sparks and you would have a spark in a tank. You would have an explosive mix in the tank and the tanks would detonate and you would get these explosions. So a couple of things have been done to prevent this from happening. Number one, when you load discharge vessels, you ground them. You actually physically hook them up and you have ground grounding wires on the ships to ensure that you don't have a buildup of static electricity. The other element you have is an inert gas system, which basically lowers the oxygen level in the tanks, usually through a scrubber system on the exhaust that will basically dump in carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide into or nitrogen into the tanks, and you lower the tank's explosive uh, ability. You basically remove the oxygen. If there's not enough, enough oxygen, you can't have the explosion. Some ships have inert systems installed in them because of the, the, the engines on board. 
But what you're seeing right here is none of that is either being done. So number one, this ship is at anchor off the coast of Malaysia, and this ship was involved in a ship-to-ship -ship transfer probably. It was loading oil at sea at anchor, which means you're not grounding the vessel. Number two, it's not clear if the inert gas system was working on this vessel because I'm not sure when this ship met its last classification and what classification it has, as you're going to find out right now. So all ships have to have some some uh, requirements on them. They have to be flagged. This ship is flagged in Gabon, which right there is a flag. Let, let me be clear. I mean, red flag, I should say. This is not a nation that has a huge track record of safety when it comes to vessels. Gabon is not it. Second of all, you have to have a classification society for this vessel, and this vessel is missing the essentials here. So this is a buddy of mine's Twitter page, Charlie Brown at Supro, S-U-P-B-R-O-W on Twitter, a, a must follow on Twitter. Please do so. He has great information on this, and he has been talking about this for a long time. He's based out there in Singapore. I got the word about the Pablo's fire from him. But one of the big things that he has been documenting, documenting excuse me, is these issues right here this issue. So the ship is right off the coast of Malaysia, as you see right here, outside national waters. According to UNCLOS, the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea, nations control out to 12 nautical miles from the high water mark. This is beyond 12 miles of the coast of Malaysia. So you have this huge, massive anchorage just east of Malaysia, northeast of Singapore, where tankers are sitting. This ship was supposedly heading from China to Singapore, but I don't think it was ever going to Singapore. It was going to this anchorage. Because what has been taking place here is ship-to-ship -ship transfers. These are satellite images off uh, open source intelligence intelligence grabbing anchorages, this anchorage off the east side of Malaysia, where these ship-to-ship -ship transfers are taking place. And a lot of this has to do with oil coming from Venezuela, Iran, and also China. And this is the way they're getting around some sanctions and some enforcement agencies. These, this oil is being reloaded and shipped into other tankers and then being moved to other places. We just had the story here about Iran seizing a Marshall Island flag tanker, the Advantage Suite. This is in retaliation to the U.S. diverting a tanker with Iranian oil that probably did the transfer right here, right off the coast. But as I mentioned before, this is taking place outside of national waters, which means there's no port state control. This is the enforcement agencies that ensure that things like Solus 1974 are being enforced and making sure that ships are meeting their minimum requirements, which means you're creating what is known as the dark fleet, vessels that are operating outside the bounds of the rules and regulations established for international shipping. This is Pablo right here, and you can see her off the coast. This is marine traffic, and you'll see the vessel right here off the coast basically in the area off of Malaysia right now. This is the sheet here. I'm going to remove my big melon of a head so you can see this. So this is the, the, the information off marine traffic, and this is where you usually get information about vessels. And so, for example, here, when you pull up general, you'll start finding out information about the vessels. You get everything from tonnage to classification to all the information, 26-year-old tanker uh, built in Japan. But when you start pulling up things, notice there's no classification society, no owner listed, and the manager is unknown. And when you come into ownership and associated parties, again, manager unknown, technical managers listed as global tech marine services, you get a builder, engine builder, you get an insurer, the West of England ship owners, but not a lot of specific information regarding this vessel. You come over here, this is Equus. So Equus is a database done by the European Union on vessels. And I want to take you through this just a minute to show you exactly what is going on with this vessel. So here, Gabon flagged, you find all the information you need, gross tonnage, when the ship was built. So a couple of things. So 0% uh, percent of inspections uh, having led to a detention in the last 36 months. That sounds really, really good when you look at it. So it sounds like a good track record. When you look here at management details, for example, okay, you find out who the ship manager is. It lists Pablo Union Shipping, a uh, trust company complex located in Majuro in the Marshall Islands. Uh, when you go to details on this, not much here. When you do the Google search for Pablo Union Shipping, what comes up front here in Venezuela? 
basically. So this is a Venezuelan company. It's a Venezuelan company that's operating through the Marshall Islands, and Venezuela has been under sanctions from several countries. Now, we're seeing Venezuela being able, through Chevron, for example, to start shipping oil to the United States, but there have been issues with uh, sanctions being levied against them by certain nations around the world. Come back into Equus here and you look at the management details. We see the Pablo shipping. Come over here to classification. This is the perhaps the most disturbing thing I think I found about this vessel right now is that it doesn't appear to be under a classification society. A classification society for shipping is the third party interested group. You have the flag state, Gabon, you have the owner, but then you have a classification society. And the classification society is meant to ensure that there is uh, basically documentation documentation and all the necessary safety inspections are done. It was initially classified by NK, uh, which is a very legitimate classification society, but that was withdrawn in 2020. It then went to Indian Register of Shipping, but then it was withdraw withdrawn in 2020. And then it went to the Polish Registry of Shipping, but it has since been with withdrawn in 2022. This ship has been operating almost exclusively in the East Asia region, operating mainly between China and Singapore. When you come over to inspections, you'll see the vessel was last inspected on in August 18th of 2022 in Malaysia under the Tokyo MOU. This is the Tokyo Memorandum of Understanding. This is one of those port state controls where the initial inspection is done. And when you pull up the inspection, you'll see it here. The vessel was inspected. There was no deficiencies at the time of the inspection. When you pull up the details under the Tokyo MOU, and again, there are these regional MOUs, memorandums of understanding that do these inspections. For the United States, it's the US Coast Guard. In uh, Europe, it's the Paris MOU. So you have these regional understandings. So here's the information on Pablo right here. Oh, go back to that, there we go. IMO number, that is the number of the ship that never changes. No matter what the ship's name is, it will always change. Her call sign. But the most, I think, unbelievable thing right now here is that it's listing a classification society as other. Basically, it, it doesn't say who it is. And to me, that is perhaps the biggest problem. Go on here, it lists the type, when it was built, deadway tonnage, shows you the Pablo Union Shipping Company, its IMO number, Marshall Island flag, Marshall Island registry, and then a uh, basically an email in which to contact them. So I'm thinking that the explosion on board Pablo, which is probably a gas explosion on board, either taking place during a ship-to-ship -ship transfer or prepping for the ship-to-ship -ship transfer. They may have been cleaning tanks, may have been prepping tanks to take a different load on board. It depends on the cargo you're taking on board. May have resulted in this explosion on board. And I think it's a distinct element here that this is the growth of the tanker, shadow fleet, dark fleet, ghost fleet, whatever you want to call it. Lloyd's List did a great series of podcasts. This is the link to them. I'll have them in the show notes for you, where they look at this and really the growing impact of this dark fleet. It started with Venezuela and Iran and has since grown to include uh, Russia. And about 10% of the world's tanker fleet is now operating in this environment. And we have been talking, a lot of people have, I have, and many other people across the industry have been talking about the fact that this was going to be dangerous, that the ship to ship transfers that were taking place in Malaysia, in the Mediterranean, off the coast of Greece, in the Atlantic, in the high seas, all of them were fraught with danger. You were going to see oil spills. You were going to see uh, potential uh, collisions with vessels. And on the worst case, a fire and explosion, which is exactly what we're seeing right now on board the Pablo with members of the crew missing. And this has to do, again, with this kind of uh, voracious appetite that China has for oil. Uh, they will buy oil on the open market from Venezuela, from Iran, from Russia, from anyone. And they'll do it. And again, that's the same for everyone. I am not pointing fingers here because let's be clear, everyone has a role to, to play in this. The United States, the European powers, the G7, everybody, IMO, the International Maritime Organization, there are a batch of people who are at blame for this. And this is part of what's happening on the high seas right now. This is why you're seeing this element of the lawless sea, the outlaw sea, whatever you want to call it, happening. And you're seeing it off the coast of Malaysia in the South China Sea. 
really hoping the best for the crew members on board this vessel. Uh, not exactly sure what's going to happen. Fire is raging on board the vessel right now based on images we've seen. Uh, probably going to get out of control. Not sure you're going to be able to save this vessel. Hoping they'll be able to find the missing crew members. I hope I touched on a subject that maybe you don't know much about, but this is one that you should know about. If you enjoyed today's video, hey, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. Leave a comment. Again, I do not know everything on this story. Story. This is a developing story. So if I got things wrong, my apologies. But again, this is going to be changing as we learn more. Leave comments, give it a thumbs up, share it across social media. And if you can support the page, how do you do that? You can hit that super thanks button down below or head on over to Patreon. You'll see a link at the end of the video or down the show notes where you can become a monthly yearly subscriber until our next video or the next ship explodes. This is Sal signing off.